Republic City is something that bridges both the original Avatar The Last Airbender show, the continuation comic book series, and the sequel series Legend of Korra. It's one of my favorite parts of Legend of Korra, and it has a fascinating history. I did some digging, and went through all medias of Avatar to put together this narrative that explains the history of how and why Republic City was made. While most of this is facts and canon, parts of it are also theories and predictions for what's to come, which if I don't say so myself, are probably very spot on. So let's get started. As I said, the origin of the city dates all the way back to the original show, as well as the continued comic book series after the show ended. After the 100 year war ended and the finale of the last Airbender series, Team Avatar and Zuko, who was now Fire Lord, came up with the Harmony Restoration Movement. This would undo what Zuko's grandfather Sozin and his father Ozai had done when they led the Fire Nation to take land that belonged to the Earth Kingdom. The Harmony Restoration Movement would return the Fire Nation colonies, or the parts of land that the Fire Nation took over, back to the jurisdiction of the Earth Kingdom, forcing the Fire Nation citizens that lived there to go back to the Fire Nation. Zuko was all on board for this. However, when Yu Dao was brought into the picture, everything changed. Yu Dao was the oldest of all of the Fire Nation colonies, and the Fire Nation citizens that lived there refused to give it back to the Earth Kingdom. Just to give a bit of history on the Yudao colony, so we can understand that both sides have fair arguments as to why the colony should stay or go. Yudao was a very poor Earth Kingdom village until Fire Nation settlers came to the area. Together, both the Firebenders and the Earthbenders lived and worked together, and with the combination of the two, they were able to make the finest metal of any nation. They turned the poor village into one of the richest cities in the world, and became one of the Fire Nation's greatest assets, despite it not being in the actual Fire Nation territory. It makes sense why the Firebenders would not want to give this up, especially because of how successful they were working with the Earth Kingdom. But it also makes sense why the Earth Kingdom would want the Fire Nation out, because even though they lived in peace, the Fire Nation got most of the wealth, and the Earth Kingdom got next to nothing. Also, it was originally their land, and with the Harmony Restoration Movement, they thought that they would get the land that was taken from them back. About a year after the Harmony Restoration Movement was made, Fire Lord Zuko went to the colony to tell the mayor that they had to move out. The mayor was not happy and called Zuko a traitor and a coward, especially when comparing him to his father, Fire Lord Ozai. That along with the fact that he found out that the mayor's wife was an earthbender and together they had a child, he decided to go along with the Fire Nation and keep the colony. In his head, Zuko told himself that this was all okay because of the unity that he saw with the mayor's family, having a Fire Nation father and an Earth Kingdom mother. And that was just one example of how the whole colony had unity the same way, with Earthbenders and Firebenders. Zuko doing this led to what looked like the start of a war between the Earth Kingdom led by the Earth King and the Fire Nation led by Zuko. However, unlike the last war, Avatar Aang was there to put a stop to it this time. He carried Zuko out of the battle, and later Zuko passed out. He was going through a metamorphosis due to him making a decision that was in conflict with his self-image, much like what happened after the events of Lake Laogai in the original series. He did not want to be a traitor and a coward compared to his father, but he knew what he was doing was wrong, and when those two things clashed in his head, it provoked the metamorphosis. Right before that happened, Aang pointed out to the Earth King who he was fighting. When the Earth King looked, he saw he was fighting people from the Fire Nation, the Earth Kingdom, the Water Tribe, and the Air Nomads, all four of the elements. Aang pointed out that he's not only fighting an army, but a whole new kind of world, and that line is key, a whole new kind of world. Aang took Zuko to his uncle's tea shop while he was going through the metamorphosis, and Zuko slept for four days, clearing his head and making him finally see reason. Both Zuko and Aang agreed that Yu Dao could not continue to be a Fire Nation capital, but also that it couldn't go back to being an Earth Kingdom city either. They knew that it had to become something new. Now this brings us to Cranefish Town and the Earth and Fire Refinery. The Earth and Fire Refinery was created by Lobin and Lao Beifong, aka Toph's father. They set up a factory in a meadow that was rich with natural resources, and they attracted labor forces from all four nations. Once again, just like in Yu Dao and the Almost War, the four nations coming together as one. Here, however, Lobin took advantage of the workers and his business partner, Lao, and when Team Avatar arrived, they put a stop to this. Aang also had another reason to put a stop to this factory, as it was on the land where the Air Nomad celebrated one of his past lives, Avatar Yang Chen. The part about Avatar Yang Chen and the whole meadow goes much deeper, but I'll save that for another video. Moving on, Lobin was kicked out of the Earth and Fire Refinery, and his nephew, Satoru, and Lao Beifong took over. Satoru and Toph also struck up a deal, Satoru offering to sponsor Toph's metal bending school, something that she excitedly accepted. They went on to build their new factory in the shores of the Western Earth Kingdom, right next to Yu Dao. Eventually, that place was named Cranefish Town, named after the fish that surrounded the land. 
They started with one street and three shops that supported the earth and fire refinery, but it quickly grew faster than anyone could have ever expected. By the time Team Avatar came back, it had grown rapidly, Sokka even saying that they could fit 10 new DAOs inside of it. Earth and Fire Industries was the first factory, but quickly there were dozens more created, making the city extremely large and very profitable. However, there were many problems, especially because there was no government. All they had was a business council, but they could not control all of the violence going on in the city. Benders from other nations fought each other very often. This also made the non-benders living there scared and angry at the benders. This went even farther when benders came to the city looking for work. But when the factories could not employ every bender looking for a job, the unemployed benders turned to a less honest means of using their abilities to attack and steal from non-benders. While Aang was there, he pushed forward the idea of having a police force, which I'll talk about in a minute. Aang also discovered an island in the middle of a bay while he was there, something that again would play a part in the future, which again I'll talk about in a minute. With so much conflict going on in the Western Earth Kingdom area, first with the almost war over Yu Dao and the constant conflict between benders fighting each other and benders taking advantage of non-benders in Cranefish Town, Aang and Zuko decided to do something about it. They knew that they had to find a way to regulate the balance of power, a way to make everyone who wanted to live together in peace equals. For hundreds of years, there had been four territories for each separate element, but they realized that while that might have worked in the past, change had to be made. Aang and Zuko decided that there had to be a fifth nation. This nation would be a society open to any one of the four nations, benders and non-benders. Now as I said, some of this is theory and predictions that I have, and this next part is what I think is going to happen, and based on my intense research, I'm almost positive that I'm right, but I think that to regulate the power of this nation, they will turn Cranefish's business council into a council of representatives. And going back to the facts, the council I'm referring to is the United Republic Council. We saw this in Legend of Korra, and the council was comprised of one member from each of the four nations, making sure that each voice was heard, no matter what nation you're from. We know from Legend of Korra that shortly after the United Republic Council was formed, Republic City followed not too long after that. Bringing everything full circle, Yu Dao merged with Cranefish Town to make one huge city that was renamed Republic City. While the United Republic Council kept order in the government, they needed something else to calm down the violence and crime in the city. This is another prediction and theory that I have, so this part is not canon. I'm going to bring you back to the deal that Satoru and Toph made where the Earth and Fire Refinery sponsored her metal bending school. We know from Legend of Korra that Toph would eventually become the chief of police, leading officers that were all highly skilled metal benders. And I think that the original members of the police force came from Toph's metal bending school. It makes sense because she would trust them more than anyone as she herself taught them everything that they knew about metal bending. Also, with Satoru being one of the original founders of the nation, he would have a lot of say and a lot of influence on how to protect the city, and letting his good friend Toph, and the school that was sponsored by his livelihood company, it would be the logical choice for him. Now again, back to the facts. With the United Republic Council in place, and the police force armed and ready to go on Toph's orders, the city was well commanded and well regulated, each nation getting a fair say in the government, and everyone being able to feel safe with the police force. Going back to the island in the middle of the bay that Aang found in the comic book Imbalance, I have another theory. I'm almost positive that this would eventually turn into Air Temple Island, where he formed a new place for air nomads, and eventually his son, Tenzin, and grandchildren, Jinora, Iki, and Milo, would continue the air nomad legacy. And during the events of Legend of Korra, this was of course the home of Tenzin and his family. Now let's dive into the actual city and what was inside of it. They had downtown, which is in the center of the city. This is where they had most of the big shops and stores, and where Korra beat the crap out of those benders in season 1. They also had Republic City Park, which was much more open with fields and trees. This would later be renamed as Avatar Korra Park later on in the Legend of Korra series. They also had City Hall, where most of the government was located, and of course where the United Republic Council was based. They also had the police headquarters where Toph and her metal benders were located, and eventually a large statue of Toph would be put up in the entrance of the building in her honor. And of course we know that Lin Beifong, Toph's daughter, took over her mother's job as chief of police. The port was another big area. Here, supplies and necessities from the other nations would be delivered, and it was also where the city's factories would ship out their goods to the other four nations. The city would also become the home of the sport Pro Bending, and a giant Pro Bending arena was built on the edge of the city next to the water. It was made of solid gold, and was one of the most popular spectacles that the city had to offer. The city had many other things as well, like the Ba Sing Se Mall, Central City Station for transportation, which also had a statue of Fire Lord Zuko in his honor. The Southern Water Tribe Cultural Center, which had a statue of Sokka in his honor. 
And finally, when Aang died, Aang Memorial Island was created, and on it stood a giant statue of Aang. It was located in between Air Temple Island and Republic City, the two things that Aang would forever be remembered for creating, changing the world. Thanks so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media. Links for that will be in the description. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be listed on my next video, plus a bunch of other rewards, check out my Patreon, which is linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you press that subscribe button to help grow the channel. Again, thank you so much for watching, and look out for more great videos on the way.